Now, the chain rule leads to other new derivatives as well, which, though not exactly new, are nevertheless useful. One of the best examples is something called the material derivative. Let's say that you have some field, some uh, value that is changing over space, and you have a particle that is moving around through that field. The material derivative measures the rate of change of that field along the particle's path. So let's say that this is something like temperature or density, something that's evolving over time and changes from place to place. How does that quantity change along the path of this moving object, of this particle. Now, let's make this a little more specific. Let's say I have a function f that depends on time, t, and position, x. But x also depends on time. It's the path of the particle. Then, the material derivative is defined as follows. It's usually called df dt with a, a big capital D. That's kind of weird, I know. But uh, that's the notation that's used. It's really just the time derivative of f at t, comma x of t. You substitute in that particle's path. Now, this can be expressed as partial f partial t plus partial f partial x times dx dt. We're going to unpack that formula in just a minute, but it's helpful to think of specific example, something like temperature of a fluid, and then this derivative measures the rate of change of that particle's temperature as it flows along the path. Now, this is extremely important in physical applications, in things like uh, climate science, fluid dynamics, stuff like that. Okay, one of the things that we're going to do to understand this is, first of all, replace that dx dt term with v, the velocity of that particle. And yes, this notation is a little bit strange, that capital DF, capital DT, whatever. Let's just roll with it and think about where this formula comes from. It's really just the chain rule. Let's let g of t be the function um, t and then x of t that records the time and then the space. And then we're going to keep f the same as it is. f is just uh, t comma x. Then to apply the chain rule, we're going to take the derivatives. The derivative of g with respect to t is this column vector that first of all has a 1 and then has dx dt. df, of course, depends on both the t and the x variables. And what I get is partial f partial t for the first entry, and then for all the remaining entries, the partial derivatives with respect to the space variables, which I'll compress into partial f partial x. Now look at what happens when you apply the chain rule. Multiply those two matrices together, and what do you get? Partial f partial t plus partial f partial x times dx dt. Okay, this is just a simple chain rule computation. Now, a few things to note. Physicists often call this the material derivative. Sometimes they call it the total derivative. It's got this weird notation. Of course, this is simply just a derivative with respect to time. It's not that big of a deal. There's nothing magical about this. This is one example of using the chain rule in practice.